Hey guys and welcome to Petrol Ped. And welcome to Newtown Mid Wales. Yes, I am actually at Electric Classic Cars where we filmed Vintage Voltage. Because all throughout filming, there was a car that was often in the workshop in various states of um, build. And it's behind me. That may well look like a normal VW Beetle, but it's not. Oh no, it's had a little bit of Electric Classic Cars and Moggy Madness sprinkled onto it. Now it sure is good to be back here at Electric Classic Cars and I cannot tell you how excited I am to finally get this car on the channel and to share it with you because it really is very, very special. Now normally in my videos I'm the one doing the talking and the explaining and, and kind of telling you all about the car but I'm not the expert on this car but Moggy is. So I'm going to go inside, find Moggy, drag him off of whatever job he's doing in the workshop and get him to walk us around this car because when we did his crew cab um, and that was back end of last year early part of this year um, there were quite a few comments about we want to know more about the details more about the actual work so we're going to go overboard on this one i'm going to tell you everything there is to know about this car um, in terms of how it was done the power the challenges everything and then with a bit of luck we might take it up the road for a fib, <laughs> for a spin because it's madness, utter, utter madness. You'll recognise this chap, Moggy. Good to have you back on the channel, my friend. Good to see you, mate. So, I'm finally back here in Wales to get my hands on a car I've wanted to drive for a while. Or well, you're going to drive it. Well, I'm going to experience it. <laughs> we'll I don't know whether I'm brave enough to drive it, to be honest. So, you may or may not know, but we've known each other for a long time. Longer than, longer than I tend to, actually longer than I can remember now. I know, I longer than old. I can remember, yeah. So we were at university together uh, in like 1990 to 93, 94. When it was all still in black and white. Yeah, pretty much. And at that time, this chap had a Beetle. Now, the Beetle we're going to look at today isn't the same Beetle, but you still have that Beetle. I do indeed. Still but an absolute Beetle nut, air-cooled nut. Was. And at some point in the past, you decided to go electric and put a... 600 horsepower Tesla drivetrain in a Beetle. Correct, yep. And I thought you guys would like to see the car, but the best person to talk around the car and to explain everything is you. <laughs> no, it's you, mate. Oh, it's me. <laughs> yeah, so, right. so Moggy's going to show us around the car. So uh, let's take a look, because it's, it's quite special. And he's Just quite like special. <laughs> <laughs> right then, the beast. So first thing I had to sort out before I even thought about putting 600 horsepower into this thing, was how is it going to be able to cope with 600 horsepower and the speed that comes with it so the first thing i did get you know coming from my sort of like rallying background and uh, things like that is lighten the car up because whenever you drop weight off a car that's free power so the first thing i started looking at is things like you know weight saving so we put carbon fiber bumpers on the front uh, fiberglass wings on the front and you know around the car in different places we we just lightened it up the car ended up being about a thousand kilos with everything on it so it's a 600 horsepower per ton vehicle this is so we're talking about hypercar territory wow so there's a lot of lightning uh, that's got into this car and i'll touch on those but the other thing that's worth mentioning now at the front as well apart from the led headlights which obviously you know really uh, improve the lighting uh, compared to the old candles <laughs> in the wind like the old car because this is a daily driver this is not like you know something that's you know covered in a cloth for you know all of its life and two days in the summer it comes out this i drive this back and forth to work um so the other thing is aerodynamics um a beetle has never been known to be an aerodynamic um wizard so uh, we had to do some aerodynamic changes to keep the car planted at higher speeds yeah so for instance we've got an air dam at the front and uh, at the back there's a spoiler and that really helps to keep the car down planted on the ground uh, above 100 miles an hour so so these cars stop what what was the power in the top speed because it wasn't 600 horsepower uh, right? no it was uh, 45 horsepower originally in this car um and i remember the days back in college when i was with you um when i was looking for things like you know 10 10 percent more power i'll put some Delorto carbs and i put a a bigger like bug pack exhaust on it and then now it's like 65 horsepower so you know you were pushing five percent ten percent like improvements and the thing is with electric power is you know back in petrol days um it was you know you're chasing more power more power more power 
But with electric, you're not chasing more power, you've actually got too much power. It's all about traction with electric. Yeah. So we're not chasing more power nowadays, it's just like how on earth do we get this amount of power down to the ground? So that's what I've been concentrating on lately. Uh, what's the battery pack in this? So we've got uh, 12 LG cams. Um, they're about 60 volts um, each. So we've got six in the front, six in the rear. Yep. So that's about 32 kilowatt hours. Okay. So essentially this pack here is in parallel with the pack in the rear, which is behind the back seats. Yeah. So you've got about 16 kilowatt hours in the front, 16 kilowatt hours in the back. And it's, it's, it's really like, you know, mounted low down as well. So this is between the axles but it's actually mounted on the floor. Yep. So the, the weight is really nicely, you know, low down. So yep. going around corners, it's lovely. And having a bit of an additional weight on the front of a Beetle, it's isn't, a good thing. Isn't a bad thing, right? No, because uh, the, the old problem with the uh, Beetles was it was like a 60-40 weight distribution. So there's too much weight on the back. Yep. And when you went into a corner, if you didn't transfer the weight a little bit forward to be, be able to grip the front tires when you were pushing, Pushing on, yeah. It would understeer. Yeah. And if you corrected it too much, it would snap over steer. So you, it like, oh, I've got no, nothing, and then you floor it. And, Whoa, too much, and the yeah. back would come round. Now with this, it, I've got something like, a, I think something like a 54, 46 weight distribution, which is pretty darn good. Yeah. So now it goes around corners like it's on rails. Yeah. So and and the weight doesn't change as the fuel tank drains, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so it's equally, I don't need to put a bag of sand in the front to be able to make it handle like, <laughs> it, like it did with my old 68. <laughs> what else we got? We got a charger in the front. So this yep. is a seven kilowatt charger. Um, so this is uh, you know what takes the AC power when you plug it in. Where's my plug? So that's not it? So when you when you plug it in there. Very cool. So seven kilowatt charger. Uh, also got a DC converter in here. So that's essentially taking the high voltage of the main battery pack and it's taking that down to 14 odd volts to charge up the 12 volt battery, which is just underneath that panel there. You can't quite see that. Um, that's one of the high voltage connections. So that's just connecting the batteries that are in there to the rest of the high voltage system. Um, do I spy some Porsche brakes? You do indeed. Well spotted, sir. <laughs> so, and some Porsche wheels, by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah. You've got to have some wide wheels on this, otherwise, you know, 600 horsepower with original Beetle wheels and tyres yeah. would be hilarious. <laughs> frightening. Uh, so you got uh, Porsche 997 brakes on the front. Uh, we've got some uh, wheels um, off a of Porsche. I can't remember which one. Probably a Boxster or something like that. But uh, they're seven inch on the front, nine inch on the rear and some Yokohamas, which have seen better days now because I've ruined them. How, how would you ruin them, mate? I've, oh, I've not seen know. them, no. Oh, no traction like issues, traction yeah. issues. <laughs> Those seats are lovely. They are, aren't they? They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, they're, they're carbon fibre as well. Yeah. So carbon fibre seats, uh, post aluminium frames on them. So again, they're nice and lightweight because I just wanted to something that would hold me in place, but equally, you know, was nice and lightweight. Yeah. They're adjustable front and back. And you know, the, the fact that you can do that means that the kids can get in the back when they're brave enough. Yeah. So you take the kids to school in a 600 horsepower Beetle. Yeah. yeah or, you, or, or you go shopping. Uh, again, this, although this is like hypercar fast, yeah. I don't drive it like a hypercar. Yeah. I drive it to go and get the bread from the shops and, you know, I just drive it normally. Yeah, yeah. And on decent days, I'll drive it to work and back. Yeah, so. yeah. This is for me the bit that because this car's been around quite a bit while we were filming last year and in bits most of the time oh, i've had this car um five years yeah um originally i put a dual motor setup in here so there was like a two induction motors one on top of each other um i did that oh, about four years ago something like that i bought this car f for 300 quid so w w seriously <laughs> when i bought it um you could stand in the car and your feet would be on the ground because there was so much rust inside, the floor pan had rotted away, and literally one, one foot would be on rust, the other foot would actually be on the floor. <laughs> so it was a, a project, let's yeah. say, 300 quid. So, but we had to do a lot of work on it to um, sort out the bodywork, uh, get it restored to this extent. Yeah. But then when I put the 600 horsepower, as I'll show you in a minute, there's yeah. a lot of strength in the uh, yeah. to a car, because this car had 45 horsepower, it's never designed to take this <laughs> Right, before I show you the money shot, yep. let's just cover off some other bits and pieces. So, lightning again, so Lexan windows. Yes. Aerodynamics at the back. Now, this little kick spoiler here doesn't look like much, but it has a hell of a 
like impact above 100 miles an hour. I've driven Beatles and drag raced them, and above 100 miles an hour, it, they really become like light. You know, yeah. it's horrible, quite frankly. But this, I've done 140 on this um, on a runway a couple of weeks ago, um, and at 140 miles an hour, it just felt like a, a, you know, a modern Beamer on the motorway. Wow. Solid, planted, I could let go of the steering wheel, uh, and it was just lovely. Wow. So, yeah, 140 miles an hour before I ran out of um, Runway. bravery. And bravery. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I've not known you run out of bravery, mate. So, but yeah, planted because of the aerodynamics. So you've got the air dam at the front, this little spoiler here, which it stops all the air coming down here yeah. and wanting to suck up the rear like that. Yeah. So having it to spoil the air like that, it just, you know, it avoids that whole vacuum like sucking yeah. up here. You didn't think of like a big kind of 911 whale tail type thing. <laughs> They look rubbish, right? Nah, nah, on, on a bit. Nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Come on, then, money shot. Bring right, it on. Aerodynamics. Uh, I've covered off lightning and ta-da! Oh, the business end. So that is a Tesla large drive unit out of a performance um, Model S. So that's giving me 600 horsepower and what's that? It's about 650 newton meters of torque, which is around about 480 foot pounds of torque in old money. So those. Do you have to change the software to get them up to 600? Because the no, no, the the, um, the difference between a, a normal Tesla mode, so in my sensible car, my my VW bus, yes, got, which we've seen on the channel already. Exactly. So that's my sensible side. That's 450 horsepower in a 1969 VW crew cab. It looks exactly the same motor, but the difference between that and a performance motor is the inverter. So the motor is exactly the same. Yeah. It's just the inverter that can cope with more amps. So right. more amps means more power. Yeah. So the inverter is different in a performance drive unit. So off the shelf at 600 horsepower, you can tune them to be higher, but there's no point because right. you struggle to get 450 horsepower down to the ground, let alone 600. So going bigger <laughs> is just silly. Yeah. Like 600 isn't silly. And I can see lots of strengthening bars and. Yes. Uh, so this was something we definitely had to sort out. So obviously with 600 horsepower, or it's actually it's not the horsepower, it's the torque. With that amount of torques, uh, 650 newton meters of torque, it literally just wants to rip this whole like back end of the car off. Mm. So to be able to stop that from happening and you know get the traction down without this whole thing going like that. We've had to strengthen it all up. So you've got triangulation coming down here, yeah, and then going underneath. So the whole of the rear, like motor, if you like, isn't mounted to the actual car itself. It's mounted to this frame that we put in. Yeah. And at the same time, to stop things like stress cracks and uh, stuff happening in these uh, panels here, we've actually double skinned them. So these these panels here actually have a secondary skin in, which you could probably see from inside the wing, yeah. uh, which just strengthens everything up again. Wow. So there's a lot of strengthening we've had to uh, think about and put in place. Um, and these get triangulated up into uh, a very strong place in the body. And obviously you've got frame rails coming out from underneath in the floor pan. They've been strengthened and triangulated as well. So what you have down there, you can't quite see it, but basically you have two frame horns coming out like that mm -hmm. and in, a, in the old Beatles when I was drag racing them you used to get a little problem of the engine used to want to twist them like that yeah so what we've done is we've triangulated these two frame horns up here and up there so that essentially there's no way they can flex now because essentially they're just triangulated so we've strengthened those as well so the whole back end is locked in place the motor's still rubber mounted so it's not like yeah. hard mounted so it's still on rubber mounts but it gives us the best chance of the whole end, rear end, not getting ripped apart. Yeah. Talk to me about drive shafts. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Apart from the fact of broken a few. Well, you used to you broke quite a few on the bus, and that was 450. So yeah. Um, so this has um, got more torque. Yeah. It's got wider tyres and stickier tyres. It's lighter than the bus. Um, so we went through a learning exercise <laughs> in the drive shafts. <laughs> We AKA thought, you snapped quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so I think this is the third set of drive shafts now. Um, so what what happens with drive shafts and, and CV joints is it's the instant torque. So you got yeah. maximum torque. So what 650 newton meters of torque from zero RPM. So yeah. as soon as you plant your foot down, snap. Um, so you've got to put nice thick drive shafts on so the drive shafts that we have now are built to the same specification as tesla model s drive shafts yeah and that means you know nice and thick 
made out of very strong metal mm. but also the heat treatment is extremely important mm. so these actually go off um, to there's only one company in the whole of the UK that do heat treatment to, to that specification so they go off to heat tr uh, treatments and then they come back and then we attach um, Porsche 930 CV joints yeah. so a Beetle CV joint is probably about yay big a Porsche 944 CV joint or type 2 or VW bus is slightly bigger and the Porsche 930 is bigger again mm. so whenever the CV joints go up that's more strength yeah. and what we've also done is we've got race spec Porsche 930, uh, 930 CV joints which means that the the cages on the CV joints are built out of you know something very special unobtainium it, it exactly <laughs> it's not even chromoly it's something yeah. above chromoly I forget the name of it now um, but the, the whole CV joint is um, a race spec CV joint that's uh, made for the um, uh, the Baja races and people like that in the oh, States. Wow, wow. Um, so, and I've not been able to destroy these yet. I've tried. Well, <laughs> but so far they are moggy proof. So Mate, if something's moggy proof, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, exactly. There should be a stamp like Intel inside. It should be. Moggy proof. proof. I reckon that's th there's some branding there for you, my friend. Yeah, exactly. So, so wow. so far they're, they're okay. They've, uh, but you know, the days the day is but young. That is, yeah. Well, should we um, see if we can break them? No, no. Let <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need to be on a track to be able to break them. Yeah, exactly. So the the, the car will break traction before they break these. But yeah. uh, at some point, I do want to have a good old go at trying to break them. Good. But not today. No. Oh. I've taken my brave pills and I got my big boy brave pants on. Have you notice we're getting old men, we have to make noises as we actually get into make cars. Tail, isn't it? <coughs> and when you get out, <laughs> yeah, and all your knees start cracking. Oh my dear! <laughs> so sadly, obviously, we're in COVID time, so we have masks on. Anybody who complains because we've got masks on, you can do one right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've got a branded one. I, I just know, look like some, some. You need like, some electric classic cars branding. I one. look like a, like a nurse. Like yeah. that, <laughs> I should have brought my nurse's costume. That I, oh no, hang on. I mean, no, that's, no, that's no. A different that's film, a different it? film, mate. That's a different film. Um, now I'm going to uh, freely admit that I've never been in a Beetle before. Haven't you? No, it's my well, first. Well, I've got to warn you, they're quite slow, and yeah, they are, they, you I'd might heard, be a bit bored. A bit wheezy. <laughs> so, no clutch, sure. just put your foot down, and away you go. No power steering, it's man, man steering. Proper steering. Proper steering. And that's it. Uh, suspension wise, we've. Lots of things we've, we've done, done on suspension. On uh, so, to make it handle, well, first of all, it's a 1303. Yeah. Uh, Beetle, that is. So, a 1303 has McPherson strut suspension on the front. Yeah. Not a beam um, suspension. Yeah. So, you're already starting with some suspension which has the ability to handle better than a beam suspension. Yeah. A beam suspension is pretty good, but McPherson's better. So, we've got. Um, Eye back springs on the front, adjustable perches, um, Bilstein shocks all around, yeah. uh, bigger anti roll bars front and rear. Um, yeah, so we, we've gone to town on making sure that the suspension is up to the job of going around corners. Yeah. And, and what range would you get out of it in terms um, of you know, the difference between how what, you drive it, like just like any car? What range would I get out of it, or what <laughs> range would a normal person get out of it? All right, so 20 miles range. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on a good day. Yeah. And about 50 mile range on the tyres. <laughs> now, if I drove it normally, uh, just sitting in the traffic and like driving normally, let's say, probably about 125 to 130 mile range. Oh, okay, it's not bad. Um, it's only got a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is, you know, the, the problem is the, the right foot. It's always been a problem with me. Yes, my it right has. foot is yes. much heavier. You probably see me walking with a limp. It's because my right foot is much heavier than my left foot. Yes. So at any one time, you can just put your foot down it, and it just goes. <laughs> I always have to look at the speed. As soon as you do that, you literally go. Oh, oh that's uh, that's a unbelievable. It's good, isn't it? Oh, I like that. Uh, that's, that's, well, that's right. good. That is. But it's. Uh, <laughs> You must, you must really upset people at traffic lights in this. Oh, it's interesting. <laughs> it's oh, hilarious. Look, a wheezy old beetle stood up next to me. Yeah, you're kind of looking gone. out for, oh, look, there's a Nissan GTR. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Wow. Jeez, that's quick, man. Yeah, so, but the handling's great as well. So, I mean, if I come up to this roundabout here now, and hopefully it will be no traffic, I can show you how it handles as well, because, yeah, it's just lovely. So, I'll go into this roundabout at, you know, 
just oh, it's go around. It. Yeah, it's like a go kart. Mate, you, so, wouldn't do, you wouldn't do that in a normal vehicle without any more to do. Oh, if I did that in a normal vehicle, <laughs> it literally would be. Like, you, you come out of the roundabout, but it'll be on your roof. Yeah. <laughs> spinning around. Hey, oh, what's going on? The one thing you can notice is the wind noise because the, the body shape wasn't designed to be going this fast, right? No, no. <laughs> uh, at 140 miles an hour on that runway a couple of weeks ago, I thought one of the windows was open. <laughs> one of the questions since the TV show came out, lots of people said, oh, you know, you put these electric motors in. I said, it's not just that, it's all the other things around it. Oh, it's, the, it's the braking, it's the handling, it's the balance. And that's why these cars end up being so much better. It's like some of all their parts. Yeah, exactly. I, a lot of people concentrate on the performance aspects of electric cars because they're numbers that impress people. Yeah. But it's very difficult to get over on a piece of paper or a camera how well a car actually performs. Yeah. You know, the, the old top gear sort of like slide it around the track is rubbish. I yeah. mean, nobody uh, buys a car because it, it slides smoking tires around the no, ground no, track. Exactly. But it's impressive on camera. Yeah. But how do you get get over to people that literally it'll go around the roundabout at 50 miles an hour like this. Mate, that, that is absurd. Yeah, no, nobody expects it, especially a BMW X1. <laughs> <laughs> and then, especially if you overtake him now. Uh, and nobody expects it then to just do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> that guy's face was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> mate, wow. Do you like it? Yeah. Do you want to have a go? I'd love to have a go, mate. Go on then. All right then. <laughs> Didn't have to ask you twice, did you? No, not really, no. <laughs> right. Wow. All right, so this is my first Beetle drive. It's a good way to start. Just be it? gentle with the throttle, that's what I'm saying, because although this is a Beetle, it's actually hypercar quick. Yeah. So just be gentle until you're used to it with the accelerator. But apart from that, how fun. I don't know if it's to get in the passenger seat or just like wait on the no, side of the road. Get in the passenger seat. Definitely getting, oh, he's getting overlooked. Well, I can see what you mean by the, the steering being mildly heavy. It, it's better than going to the gym, but once you get going, it's fine. But you can drive like Miss Daisy, like, no problem. But as soon as you start oh, moving foot down. That's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's a nice feeling. That, that's about 5 or 10%. Oh, yeah, you're just, <laughs> you're just stro on it. stroking the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. If you floor it, you'd be... It's, it's, it's funny, because I drive lots of very, very fast cars, and you, a lot of them will drive quite nicely, but if you just smash a throttle, you're going to get into trouble. But this feels like if you smash it, you really are, really are going to get into a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, do you use these cars almost like a test bed for, for the customer cars? Like, yeah, to kind try of. technology I, I, out and with, see what can be done. So with my cars, I try to push the technology. Yeah. Because with a customer car, you never want to push the technology because essentially it might impact a little bit on the reliability, but also on uh, the time frame of a project for yeah. the customer. So you always want to do your R and D and your test beds. Just go straight on. Yeah. Um, on your own vehicles. Yeah. So with this, I thought, right, let's push it. Let's see from a performance point of view how much we can push it. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll bleep that bit out. Hey, it's good, isn't it? That is unbelievable. I'm I'm gutted we've got masks on because the look on my face then was probably you just got the whites of my eyes going, yeah. what the? You, you saw your mask drop a little bit as your mouth opened. What a thing. It's an absolute weapon on the road. Once, you, once you're used to it, you, you're used to how much power you got and also the limit of the handling. Yeah. This will just blow away anything on the road. So this, having driven the Ferrari, this feels way faster than that. Oh yeah, yeah, go go around the roundabout again and floor up the hill because then you'll get the full impact of a torque up a hill as well. Yeah. So this this is. Oh, there we go. That's a bit of traction control hitting it there. Wow. <laughs> you know that? Yeah. And that's just a. It's quite progressive actually. Yeah. It wasn't. It's a tiny, tiny bit, but. Mate, that is... I mean, this But is... it feels so much faster than the Ferrari, and I thought that was great. Well, the uh, Fra Ferrari got that 060 down to 2.7 seconds, um, and that's with a 450 horsepower motor in it. This, um, if I sort out the traction, get stickier tyres on, and take it to a track, it should do 060 in about two seconds. 
but, but I need sticky tyres to do that because power is not what it's about at the moment, it's about traction. Yeah, yeah. So with these road tyres on, 0 to 60, 3.2 seconds, repeatability, bang, 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 yeah, yeah. every day of the week. Yeah. Just not 3.2, no problem, as long as it's not wet. But to get it lower than 3 seconds and quarter miles in the tens, it needs stickier tyres on. So this car in the wet must be hysterical and mildly it's, it's, terrifying. It's, it's quite uh, a handful. Well, thank you for letting me drive. I didn't honestly uh, expect to drive it because I know it was a right handful, so um, I appreciate that very much. That's right. <laughs> it's wicked. Do you like it? I do very much. <laughs> you I can't, to, can't have it. I've wanted to get this car on the channel all the way through filming when it was in bits and there was wings on the shelves and stuff. I was like, when that's back on the road, <laughs> I'm going to get it on the channel. So, mate, thank you very much. That's right. Gonna, do you want to do an order 60? We yeah, should do. Yeah, we should do. You driving it. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> right then. Nord to 60 test. Ready? Three, two, one. Go. <laughs> Three and a half seconds. There you go. There's a bit of traction off the line there. It's, uh, no, that's outrageous. Spinning the tyres at the uh, start there. <laughs> well, that was a good way to finish the film, my friend. Do you like that, yeah. I did like that indeed, mate. It's just good to be, good to be back in Wales. It's mate, always it's good, good to be, to be back, back in Wales, mate. It is, mate, it is. And with silly cars like this on the road. It is. It's uh, even better. It is, mate. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petro Petro. Plenty more content that come up. Put electric classic cars, all their Instagram and social details. Follow these guys. Amazing cars going through the workshop at the moment. That's all I need to say. Why else am I in Wales? There you go. Um, but yes. Wicked mate, thank you for that. No problem. I'll see you on the next one guys, you take care. We're still alive, we survived. Drive safe, we are still alive, <laughs> only just. Yeah, drive safe everyone. Yeah, drive safe Moggy. Will do, we'll try my best. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs>